Good morning everybody, it's Sinead Kavanagh here in Navin and County Meath, the Holistic Parent. You're very welcome to Tuesday morning. Today is session 12 of the lessons of lo at lockdown, or lessons from lockdown. Um, I'm coming to you on the mobile because my computer is not working for some reason. Of course we always only find that out when we press go live, don't we? Um, anyway, you're very welcome this morning. As I said, Sinead Kavanagh here, the Holistic Parent. And this is lesson 12 from the Lessons of Lockdown series. I can't believe it's 12. That's three months, bar one. So that's, what's that, 13 weeks um, we've been doing this. So you're very welcome. Um, I'm very happy to have you here if you're watching. If you're watching on the replay, please press hashtag replay in the comments field. And just to let you know that all of the lessons are now up on the YouTube channel, Cyclistic Living and the Holistic Parent for any of your network who don't watch use uh, Facebook um, or Instagram, they can watch them there on YouTube via their internet browser. Um, I will put up a list of the um, various topics that we've covered, but just to give you an example, uh, I think I just took a little note the other day because I wanted to make sure I wasn't doubling up. As different things come up, sometimes you go, did I talk about that? Um, so, so far in these lessons, we've looked at breathing and the importance of your breath. Um, in every aspect of your life and how to breathe with ease and how to breathe in a healthy and uh, nurturing way uh, is very important. We've also looked at the idea of identity and who we are and that became very prominent in the whole lockdown um, at the early stages when people started struggling with not being able to experience the different facets of their personality because they were at home with family um, or, or housemates or whatever and not being able to be all that they are in the world. Um, following on from that we looked at communication and that one was entitled What's the Matter Baby and that was primarily to do with trying to communicate with your newborn but then also looking at communication from a wider sense um, as we are humans and how we communicate and communicate effectively um, with people. Then we went on and we looked at resilience because again during lockdown these are things that were coming up for, for me and I, I, I took it that they would be coming up for others and so that's where those kind of um, sessions were grounded. So resilience was about looking at, you know, when life delivers uncertainty, how we react and our behaviours around that and how we mind ourselves in that. Um, number six then was about digestion in one end and out the other. And that was about looking again at when we're feeling stressed, when we're under pressure, when things aren't going as we'd hoped they would go. How do we react to that? How do we respond to that? So that was number six in the lessons from lockdown. Good morning, everybody who's watching. Just pop your name in there and say or pop a hello in there so I can, can um, say hi to you. Number seven then was looking at the expectations that the roles that we hold. So going back to identity, which was lesson three um, and who we are, the roles that we hold are very important because acknowledging those roles and being aware of those roles means that we have expectations of ourselves in those roles. And we also feel the expectations of others. And it's about, is there a correlation there? Does that, does it marry, you know, or, or are we constantly striving for greater expectations of ourselves. Good morning Tracy, lovely to see you. Um, you know the expectations that we can put on ourselves can have a huge impact on how we live our life and I think it's very important that we are aware of the expectations we have and you know sometimes those expectations we have they don't even go into the, the, the mind of others that are watching on. Good morning Michelle, how are you? Um, so that was the, the expectations, the roles we hold, that was an important one. And then number eight came to gratitude and that was we were kind of looking towards the possibility of being able to move out and about more. We were looking at the possibility or at the reality that we were okay for those of us who were and our loved ones were, were still okay and, and thinking about those who were struggling. So gratitude was very important there. Then nine was about connection and that was very much about social media life and, and the new technical life that we have because we're all on Zoom and we're on Google Meet and, and uh, Teams and all of those kind of things and the conversations are all virtual and it was about looking at collecting people or connecting people and which did we want in our life and which is more enriching and you know yes we can have hundreds and hundreds of acquaintances but really in our lives we need to have you know if we can have even one or two really close friends that we can rely on and confide in and feel nurtured and supported by that's connection that's real tr true genuine connection and it's very important from the holistic parent element 
to help your children understand that and to help them be able to find those really true connections amidst all the people that they're collecting on the Snapchats and the streaks and the Instagram and the likes and the followers and that kind of thing. And, you know, as adults, we're very much um, so, uh, susceptible to that as well, especially when we're in four walls and, and not able to get out and about with the, the people we'd normally connect with. Number 10 then looked at awareness and that was very important because if we're not aware, we can't recognise all of these areas that we've been looking at. So the series has evolved very much so, which is why it became the lessons from lockdown as opposed to, you know, just these individual free online learning sessions. And for me, that was important because that evolution is human behaviour. And in looking at the human behaviour, we can see there's a knock on effect when we, you know, when we experience different things and we react in certain ways, there's a knock on effect in how that impacts us and our lives and our relationships and our connections. Um, number 11 then, last week we looked at anger and the reason for that was because we're getting out and about and because restrictions are being lifted or not, as the case may be, there's an awful lot of anger out there and there's an awful lot of people feeling very testy about various different things. And... I, I'm worried because I see that there's like camps appearing and there's, for instance, you know, with the whole COVID thing and the lockdown, there's the camp of should we travel or not abroad? There's the camp of should we allow visitors in or not? And whilst back here in the middle of lockdown in the early days, um, we were kind of mindful of that. And we were like, of course, you know, we were together. There was a unity. But now that there is a re lifting of restrictions, the camps seem to be coming further and further and further apart. And when a chasm develops between relationships and a chasm develops between fractions or factions rather, that becomes very hard to bridge. And I think people need to be aware of their feeling of anger. They need to be aware of how to communicate that and of their behaviour around that and how they actually live in their world with those they love and those they work with and those they interact with within their community and to be aware of that and it goes back to number 10 is about awareness and it goes back to number nine about connection it goes way, right the way back to number two about breathing and about just taking a breath before you go Arr! and so that's why anger was very important so it seems obvious then that this week the topic is apology and it might seem, and you know, God, how can you have a, a, a class on apology? Well, it's the art of the apology. It's the art of saying, I'm sorry. And what a true apology actually means. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different writings on this. There's so many different um, viewpoints, I suppose, on this. That, you know, we could be talking till tomorrow um, on it. And, I, and I'd love to be able to have this as a roundtable discussion in a room with people and, and have everybody kind of interacting. It's it's difficult to do online like this, but please feel free to add in your comments and add in your own observations now or later, or come back to it. Um, but there's a, there's a really important element um, with regard to apologising. And, you know, it doesn't mean that you're wrong if you're apologising and it doesn't mean that the other person is right. When we apologise the reason that we apologise is how we feel because we feel the hurt experienced by another and if we've had a hand act our part in that we want to apologise we want to acknowledge that. As I said it doesn't mean that I'm wrong or you're right it means that I value our connection more than my need to be right, than my ego requires. I value us more. And so really, when it comes down to apologising, think about times when you have. Where, was it sincere or, or not? When you apologise, did you really feel your sincerity in it? And where did that come from? Who was it you were apologising to? Now, um, I'm always kind of looking at these lessons from the point of view of parenting, because obviously the holistic parent, but in my other business, Cyclistic Living Ireland, that's not necessarily about parenting. It's about using the pragmatism of parenting, of healthy parenting, within a business context. Um, and so, 
really when you think about it we we only get to go to work because we were kids once so there's that element of parenting and that parent those parenting observations and those parenting um abilities that that do follow through in in that element of of the work life etc so looking at it from the parental point of view and an apology here's the big question do you apologize to your kids do you apologize to them when it's been something small? Do you apologise to them when it's something really big? Do you apologise to them after the fact when you've had time to go off and think about it? Or do you apologise to them when you see the hurt in their face from whatever has occurred? When we apologise, is it, oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Well, actually, maybe you did, but just maybe how you delivered it wasn't really how it could have been delivered. So what's the apology for? You're saying I'm sorry, but is it about what you've said or is it about how you delivered it? Are you apologising because you want to keep them as your friend? Are you apologising because, you know, where is it rooted? What's the, and that comes, you know, always comes back to awareness. Are you aware of why you're apologising? How many of you out there, and please give me a thumbs up. How many of you out there have said, don't but say sorry if you don't mean it. Um, there's my hand up. Um, how many have you said, it's not an apology if I have to ask for it. How many have you, of you have said, um, there's no point in saying you're sorry if you don't show it. Um, sorry is only words. It's actions that speak louder than words. You know, don't be telling me you're sorry. Show me that you are. Demonstrate it. We've all said those words as parents. And if you think back into the back of your head here where your memories are, you know your parents said that to you too. Are you repeating what your parents said? Is that is that just that this is how I learned how this works, how this apology thing works? Is, is, is that why I'm repeating that? Or are you consciously aware of your own methodology in apologising and your own behaviours around apologising? So just remember that when you're apologising, it doesn't mean that you're right and the other person, or you're wrong and the other person is right. It doesn't, it's not about right and wrong. It's not about winning. An apology is your recognition of the hurt in the other person. For, for the right or wrong reasons, justifiably or not, it doesn't make any difference. You're apologising for the hurt that the other person's experienced in your behaviour towards them in trying to put your point across or whatever it might have been. And you need to decide is your relationship more important and your ego less important? And that's why we apologise, okay? So that's an important one at the outset to be aware of. Now, obviously I'm only gonna give a snapshot on this um, and there's loads and loads and loads of different um, elements to it. But there's one woman in particular who I have um, kind of kept tabs on and followed and read um, for, for years and years and years and years and years. And the first um, book that I ever came across hers was called The Dance of Anger. And her name is Harriet Lerner. She's an American woman. I know you've seen all oh, American women. But no, actually, this woman, she's she just, just listening to her calms you because she speaks such a slow speed and she's so calm in delivering her, her, her knowledge. But she's so willing to share her knowledge. And there's lots and lots of different things. Brene Brown is a big fan of hers. Any of you who are aware of Brene Brown, um, she's uh, another lovely lady to, to listen to and learn from. And, and they have a collaboration from time to time. So they have, Harry Lerner um, goes into this in great detail. And there's lessons, she would have lessons, one to four, um, of the, the art of apologising in, in great depth. But we're not going to go into that much depth, but that's something that you can look, and I'll actually put the links to those at the bottom of this um, later on. Um, but just that's an important thing to remember about the apology. Um, the next step with regard to the art of the apology and how we apologise properly is recognising that there's a system to it. You know, there's actually a system to it. Um, there's like three steps. You say, I'm sorry. Um, you, you acknowledge that you've hurt the person and you try to make amends. Simple as that. You know, I'm sorry, the words mean nothing if there isn't the other two steps. You know, we can all get as far as one and we can all get as far as two as well. Sometimes, you know, that we acknowledge that we've hurt somebody or we acknowledge that somebody is, is affected by what we've done or what we've said or behaviours. Um, 
but the third bit is very important it's like you know how can i how can i fix it the fix what can i do to make it better what can i do to reinforce the words that i've said how can i show you and demonstrate to you that this apology is real and genuine and heartfelt now there's also um little supplementary steps in there if you like um so i call them like the 1a 2a and 3a um so those supplementary steps are when you apologize i'm really sorry that um uh I didn't make it to your party, um, but through the, the reason being that, um, you know, I got a flat tire or a babysitter let me down or whatever. So you might give a little explanation as to why it is that you're sorry. Now, that's important. When you're making your explanation, you don't use the but. Your explanation is not an excuse, as in, excuse me, I'm sorry, and I'm going to tell you why you have to forgive me. Why you're giving the explanation is to develop, to, to show an understanding and an appreciation that this meant something to the other person for you to turn up to their party. Um, your explanation of why is to sort of um, try to demonstrate that it wasn't willful. It wasn't a conscious thing that you didn't. It was so, something genuinely did occur. Now, you only bother using an explanation if it's justifiable, if it's appropriate. Don't be given an excuse on the end of your apology because that ruins an apology. A, an apology is completely ruined when you stick a butt at the end of it. You know, I'm sorry I didn't make it to your party, but in fairness, it was a Saturday night and I go do other things. But? Really? But? No. That's, you know, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. Do we know? Although that one, that gets our goat up, you know, if. No, the reality is my feelings were hurt. Whether you intentionally set out to do that or not is besides the point. The reality is my feelings were hurt. So no if I felt, no but. An apology is just as it is. I am sorry. And it's important to remember those, you know, the 1A bit, the step 1A is an explanation, not an excuse. And you only use it if it's appropriate. 2A then, what you're looking at is, you know, a, a declaration of the, the fact that, you know, I I'm, I can see that I've hurt your feelings. I really can. And that is the last thing I wanted to do. That's a declaration of repentance. I did not mean to hurt you like that. I did not mean to break your favourite vase. I did not mean to crash into your car. I did not mean for us to uh, get into an altercation where you felt less. I did not mean for that to happen. That's that, that I, I acknowledge. I can see that you're hurt. I can see that I've upset you. I can see that you're in pain from the words that I've used. But I did not mean to do that. I really genuinely, so that's a declaration of your repentance. Again, you only use it if it's appropriate. Then looking at the third step, which is, you know, are we actually trying to do something about it? Are we going to, what can I do to fix this? Um, you can, as a part of that, 3A, ask for forgiveness. Now again, Forgiveness is not automatic once you've made an apology. I can accept your apology, but it doesn't necessarily mean I forgive what you've done. I don't have to. I actually don't have to. If I feel more comfortable saying, well, you know, I accept your apology. I, I hear what you're saying. I can see that it's heartfelt. I still don't forgive the words that you used. They hurt. Simple as that. You don't have to forgive and forget just because there's been an apology. But grace would allow us to accept an apology if it is heartfelt. And that would be important. Um, having the grace to say, listen, I hear what you're saying, I understand. I don't, I accept your apology, but I don't accept the behaviour. I don't accept, you know, so I don't forgive you, you know, uh, chucking out my favourite jacket. I don't forgive you doing that. I accept that you didn't realise I accept that and I accept your apology. I, I understand that you did not mean it intentionally, but I can't forgive you for doing it. Because that was like my favourite jacket. I've had that since I was 22. Um, there might be a little smidgen of a, a home truth in that apology there. Yeah, I didn't forgive it. Beautiful red suede jacket. It was my drinking jacket. Yeah, yeah. Didn't, they didn't like it was my drinking jacket, so it really wasn't a heartfelt apology. But we won't talk about that one. Um, so that's about the steps. So there's like three, you know, if we're breaking it down into a systematic 
um, learning. There's three steps. So the three steps again are the statement where you say, actually say, I'm sorry. Step two then is about taking, you know, acknowledging the, the hurt that you've caused or acknowledging the damage that's been done. And step three is how we're going to fix the fix it. What can you do in order to, to have the actions that follow the words of the apology? And then within that, there's sort of um, supplementary um, aspects, which is 1A would be to give an explanation. It's not an excuse. Your explanation is not your excuse. There's no excuse. If you apologise, you apologise. You take ownership. The explanation could be if there's a justifiable reason for something having occurred. So you only use it if it's if it's appropriate. Number 2A then, again, just to recap, is the declaration um, of the acknowledgement. So I, I acknowledge that I've hurt your feelings or I acknowledge that that was your favourite vase. Um, I really did not intend for that to happen. I really did not consciously set out to ruin your night. I really did not consciously mean it, it hurt, occurred and I completely acknowledge that it's on me, my fault. Um, then 3A is when we're going to do the the fix, when we show what can we do to demonstrate how, how we want to make amends. Um, that can do, that can be 3A then, can be about asking for forgiveness. That you really do want the person that you're apologising to to understand that it's heartfelt and sincere. So we've looked at what an apology really means and, and why we do it, the, the reasoning behind apologising. And we've looked at the steps that make sense. But again, coming back to the parenting aspect of it is, how did you learn to apologise? Who modelled the behaviour for you? Good morning, Magella. Lovely to see you. Who modelled the behaviour for apologising for you? So as a child growing up, as an infant and a child and a, a, a teenager and a young adult, who modelled apologising to you for you? How did you learn? Did you learn from siblings? Did you learn from friends and family? Did you learn from neighbours or teachers or who did you learn that from? Because who you learned it from will have a huge impact on your ability now as an adult to actually apologise. Which I know seems bizarre that you'd kind of think, well, I know right from wrong and I know when I need to apologise. But actually, did you learn how to do it well? Is it something that you learned how to do well? Or, you know, very often as adults and parents, especially, you know, of my age, I'm middle-aged. Oh, that sounds horrible, that word. I'm middle-aged. So my family, my parents were uh, of a different generation, obviously, right? In the same way that the kids now, their parents are of our generation. What did that generation, um, how did that generation deal with apologies? Well, I know that from my point of view, when I was younger, that parents were, they ruled the roost and they were the be all and end all. They knew everything. They knew what was right and wrong. You had to listen to them. And there was never a discussion about it. So, you know, my dad would have been very dictatorial from the point of view that um, it, what he said went. Now, really, whether it was right or wrong really didn't matter. What he said went. And so if he was in the wrong, there would never be an apology to a child. You know, because as an adult, you'd never let the side down and you'd never let them know that you didn't know everything. And there'd never be the case of acknowledging that maybe they weren't perfect. Or, you know, do you understand what I mean? There's that element of, um, you know, as the adults, they they know everything and the kids have to listen. Speak until, don't speak unless you're spoken to. Um, all of those sorts of things, that attitude towards kids. So my learning, you know, when I was growing up was that from my dad was that adults didn't apologise. They could be wrong. They could do wrong. And goodness knows we know in Ireland there was an awful lot of adults responsible for an awful lot of children and an awful lot of apologies would have been needed, but they didn't happen. And so is that how we learned as, as children to become adults who find it difficult to apologise? If you just think for yourself, if you have a difficulty apologising or if you sometimes find yourself kind of querying how you do it or questioning how you do it and if you're doing it right, wrong or otherwise. Or if you find it hard. I mean, an apology is hard. Anything that's worthwhile is hard. Do you know, that's the simple fact of life. Do you know what I mean? When when, we, when we're apologising and we're acknowledging we maybe, maybe we have screwed up, you know? And you, none of us like to have to say those words. That's difficult. Um... When we're apologising as well, we can be defensive about it, you know, because we're, we're saying words that aren't comfortable. 
And so we can be defensive about it. We can approach the conversation quite defensively. I'm going in here to apologise. I know I'm going to get nailed. I'm already have my back up. Do you know what I mean? That you you go in kind of with the guns primed, maybe not blazing, but you go in with the guns primed because I'm going to apologise. But if anything is said that you know to I'm I'm this I'm going to stand my ground and I'm going to state my case. That's not an apology. That's a discussion or a debate or an argument. It's not an apology. Going in for an apology means that you put your tail between your legs and you eat humble pie and you be aware of how you are feeling and you put yourself in the shoes of the other person and you're aware of how they are feeling. And so the apology that you're making is not necessarily for what you've done. It's for the hurt that you've caused. It's for the distress that you've caused. It's for the discomfort that you have caused. So again, doesn't necessarily mean if you're, that you're wrong and they're right, but you're acknowledging how the other person has received your conversation, behaviour, discussion, words, whatever it is. You're acknowledging how they've received it and you're apologising for the impact that it had on them. I hope that makes sense. Please let me know what your thoughts on it are. Um, I don't want to, to make it confusing because it's such an important aspect of our communication as human beings that it's important that we try and do it right and get it right as best we can. So it would be great if you could um, just put your thoughts down there for me and your observations with, uh, and whether any of this resonates with you. Um, the defensiveness with which we can go into that communication and that interaction, that can have a bearing on um, the outcome of it. A huge bearing actually on the outcome of it. Because when we go into it defensively, we are automatically expecting something that's usually a negative. We're automatically kind of expecting that. That's why we've been primed to feel defensive about it. And that's about, again, you know, we need to look at why we're doing it. What, are, what is our rationale to, for apologising? Um, you know, is it to gain favour or is it to really be remorseful? Um, if we're going into a conversation, and I mean, this is in general conversations, right? In communication. If we're going into a conversation that we're going to like, well, sure, we're happy out. And we're very, it's very easy to listen to the other person, isn't it? If we're going into a conversation and we know we've gone for an interview and we've been told we have the jobs, the conversation we're going into is where they're going to talk about the ins and outs of the job. It's very easy to go in there and listen and say, tell me all, tell me how much you're going to pay me and how many holidays I'm going to have. I'm very happy to listen to this conversation. But if you've been told that you haven't got the job and you've been invited to come to a feedback um, meeting or interview, how easy is it going to be to go into that conversation? Is it going to be easy to listen? Or are you going to go into that ready and waiting to hear the things that aren't correct? The things that, you know, if they're saying, well, you don't have that, well, I can, I can counteract that. Are you going in to hear all of the exaggerated elements of what they have to say? Because if you're going in to hear those things, you're not actually listening to what has been said. So when we're defensive in a discussion of any kind, and that's never mind whether it's an apology or otherwise, it's a, a discussion of any kind. If we go into that defensively, and you know whether you are or not, because you know whether you have the guns loaded, you know whether or not your tummy's in a knot or you're feeling a bit wired or, you know, all those experiences that you would have, those physicalities that happen in our body. If we're going into a conversation that maybe we're not going to hear all the lovely things we'd like to hear. Um, so defensiveness within the, the, the experience of an apology is really detrimental to the outcome of that apology. Because if you're going in and you're going to say, I'm sorry, and you're going to say, I'm, I acknowledge that I hurt your feelings. I acknowledge that that didn't go quite the way I would have liked it to have gone. Then you have to allow them the space to communicate with you. You have to allow them the space to tell you the impact of your actions. 
you have to listen to them and hear them. If you're going in defensively, well, you're not going to hear them because what you're listening for is not how they are feeling. What you're listening for is how you can correct them and how you can point out, well, that's actually not true. Um, so an example of that would be, um, for instance, um, I always have to be very careful when I give examples because if I give examples from home, I'll be shot by my 14 year old. Don't be talking to people about our life. Um, she doesn't talk like that. She wouldn't say it like that. But I would get a very disapproving look. So I'm very conscious of it. So I want to try and come up with hypothetical situations. So we'll say um, uh, you've borrowed somebody. Oh, I know one. Um, so you've borrowed somebody's bicycle and it's a very expensive bicycle and you've cycled off to uh, the gym and you've parked the bike and locked it up. And when you come out, you realise you've lost your keys. And by losing your keys, it means you've lost the key of the bike. Hi, Heidi. Good morning. How are you? Um, you've lost the keys of the bike. And so this very expensive bike is sitting there in the, the bike rack of the gym and you can't give it back to the person who you borrowed it from and they're going to be quite annoyed with you because obviously it is a very expensive bike and what are you going to do? So you have to apologise and in your apology you've got to go to them and say look I've lost the keys, the lock, can we cut it off, I'll buy you a new lock, whatever it is that you're going to do. But what you have to do is you have to sit and listen to whatever it is that they need to tell you as to how they feel about what you've done. That's, if you're going to apologize, you have to accept that. That's accepting and acknowledging your part in it. And if they wanna sit there and it takes them 10 minutes to explain to you how much they saved and what it cost them to save the money for that bike and how much that bike means to them and the kind of bike that is and how valuable they are and how you know rare they are, whatever it is, and this type of frame and blah, 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 blah. You need to actually allow them that space. Because let's face it, you're the one who's screwed up. So the least you can do is allow them that space so that they feel that they have been heard. We can feel we've been heard only when we feel the other person is genuine in the communication. So you've made your apology. I'm sorry, I've lost the keys of, my, uh, of the lock for your bike. It's locked up outside the gym. I don't know what to do. Anything I can do. I know you're probably annoyed with me. I can understand that. And then they say, well, yeah, I am very annoyed. I'm very annoyed. I can't believe that you'd be so irresponsible. How the hell did you do it? If somebody finds those keys, they can unlock the bike. The bike is stolen. And I won't get the insurance because it was locked and it was unlocked with the key. So I can't claim the insurance. What's going to happen? I mean, the bike cost me a fortune. It took me months to pay for it. It took me years to save up for it. You know, that I had to have that imported from Germany. I so you have to listen to those things and be heard. You can't cut them off. I know, I know, I know. No, no. You don't know, that's why they're telling you. And you need to allow them to feel heard. That's a really, really important part of the apology. So often we get cut off. You know, somebody comes and says, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about, uh, I, I broke the, the window of the car there. I'm sorry about that, something fell against it. Oh, for goodness sake, you know, how am I, I have to get the insurance. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. You can't cut off the person you're apologising to. You have to hear and allow them the space to tell you the impact of your actions. It's just really, really important. It's the, part, it's the art of a sincere apology. Yeah, it's hard to suck it up, but you have to. That's called adulting. <laughs> we learn to do that when we're kids. If we have an adult who can um, uh, generate the behaviours, who can demonstrate the behaviours, who can model the really clear and appropriate behaviours for us when it comes to apologising. We need to have adults around us who can teach us that. As children, if you didn't, as an adult, you now have the responsibility to parent yourself in that respect, to learn how to make a true apology, to learn how to be sincere in your apology, to allow the other person to be able to vent whatever the expression of their feelings and their hurt and, and the impact of, of your actions on them is you have to allow them to do that and you have to go into that interaction without being defensive it's really important and it's really hard and it really is a practiced art i'm not for one minute saying that it's easy it's not but like i said nothing that's important in our life is easy 
I have a phrase that we use here that what seems easy now will not pay off in the long run and may actually have repercussions. What's difficult now will pay off in the long run and you will benefit from it, be it through a lesson learned or hard work put in now pays off later, whatever it might be. Things that are easy do not necessarily work. The really important things in life take a little bit of hard work and apologising is one of those. Remember, you're not saying that you're wrong and they're right. What you are saying is that you acknowledge that you have hurt them and that your actions have caused an impact on their psyche and you're allowing them to tell you what that impact is. And by doing that, good morning, Alethea, by doing that, by acknowledging what that impact was and by hearing them, you are allowing them to feel that you are sincere in your apology. And those things are very important. Anyone watching there, Alethea, that's just come in, she's my manager and she will presumably be bringing me a cup of tea very soon. Because um, that, that's, that's the norm. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that those expectations aren't too high, but I'd love one. Um, I'll have my glass of water for now. Um, but I'd love me a cup of tea. This was my water made for me. It has lemon and cucumber in it. There's normally a slice of mint in there as well. But uh, lovely and refreshing. And really when you're trying to hydrate. And I find that at the moment, being out and about, um, when we're chatting with people and that, it's making it, my throat is actually getting quite, um, uh, quite affected. On Friday, there was a lot of communications externally which was great to have um but um i wouldn't be you're not used to talking so much i know people watch this ancient age are always talking but no you know when you're not used to the vocal cords kind of took a bit of a beating on friday and saturday sunday i kind of felt like i had a sore throat but I, it wasn't a sore throat it was just discomfort in my throat area so i'm trying to rehydrate really really well at the moment to counteract that um michelle lovely to see you there um, so that's looking at, so the, the, the reason that we apologise, the way in which we apologise, the defensiveness that can occur when we are trying to apologise for something. Um, they're all really, really important things and they're very important for us as adults to be aware of because that is how we need to model a, a, an apology for our children to learn from. So when they're in the yard and they're playing or when they're out on the street and they're playing and somebody breaks their bike or something, you know, how that apology occurs, how we encourage them to uh, delve into a true and genuine apology is very important. We've all had the conversation where they're like, I'm sorry, that's, that's not a real apology. Um, but rather than telling them it's not a real apology, maybe explain to them what a real apology actually means in words that they can relate to, you know? So just because you're apologizing, I've said this already, but I'm going to reiterate it. Just because you're apologizing does not make you wrong and the other person right. What it does mean is that, well, if you robbed Paul's lunch yesterday at school and he's not talking to you today, well, you need to acknowledge to him that yes, it was really nice that he had a lovely wrap and you had only a plain ham sandwich. And that's why you took it. But that's not good enough. It's not a good enough reason for you to have taken his lunch. Um, and so you need to apologise because Paul is your friend and you want to stay friends. You want to be able to chat to him and, and sit with him at lunchtime tomorrow, don't you? So maybe, you know, tell him that you're sorry. Tell him that you're genuinely sorry. And, and you can explain to him why it happened. But it's not an excuse. It's not good enough. Acknowledge that it's not good enough. And maybe tomorrow you could bring him in a wrap the same as he had. Or maybe bring him in something nice like his favourite bar or something like that. And that would be something that he would like and it would make him feel better. Um, so that's okay. Um, Apologising and... That 3A thing, so the first is the statement, the second is the acknowledgement, the third is the fix. And 3A can be, an, a, a, a three can be, um, the fix can, part of that can be about um, reimbursing. Um, and I use that word reimbursing, that can be by word or by action or by deed or by something material. Be very careful as adults when we're apologising to our kids. And I think it's hugely, hugely important that we model good behavior around apologizing by apologizing to our kids and doing it heartfelt 
and doing it without the excuse, um, with an explanation if it's appropriate, um, and showing how you want to make things better for them. I think that's really important that we apologise effectively and healthily to our children because that's how they will learn to do it in the future. Now I know for me that was something luckily my mum would have been the one that would apologise where my dad would never apologise because you know he's an adult and, and it was a case of adults were always right and even when they were wrong number rule one applies they're always right you know. Um, you've all seen those little signs you know rules at the house number one mum and dad are always right number two in the event that mum and dad are wrong number rule one applies. Um, but it's not okay. It's not okay. It's very important that as adults we apologise um, genuinely and heartfelt and effectively with our children because we're modelling the behaviours that they will they will uh, demonstrate in their adult life and to their children and to those around them as well. To their children, should they have them. Um, so that part is, is really important. But be careful as an adult and as a parent when you're apologising to your children. The apology does not require a material gain. I hope you understand what I mean by that. So if you've taken the nose off the kids because you've had lack of sleep or maybe it's um, you're worrying financially, maybe you're stressed because of work or because of family illness or whatever it is that could cause your nerves to be frayed or your temper to be frayed and you've lost your temper with your child and you apologise to them. You do not need to buy them something in order to make up for your behaviour. Doing that sends a really, really poor message to your child in two ways. One, it lessens the impact and the sincerity of your words. You need them to know that your words are your bond. You genuinely mean you are sorry. That should not require any additional external input in the form of a present, a toy, a trip, clothes, money or anything like that. If you're apologising to your kids by handing them stuff, how will they ever learn the true art of a heartfelt genuine human apology? Now I know we can all be have uh, say you know we've been guilty for doing that from time to time. You know you've been out and about doing the shopping and, and they've been wrecking your head in the supermarket or whatever and and you buy some you throw something extra in the trolley and you come out and you say look I'm sorry for shouting at you in there here. That's not we do that to assuade our own sense of inadequacy because we've lost our temper. A better way to model for your child a healthy um, approach to an apology is to say, I'm sorry I shouted at you in there. I can understand you might have been upset. Do you want to tell me how you felt? Do you want to tell me how, did it? I did I embarrass you? You know, because we're people looking, you know, this is, they're not easy words to say. They're not easy at all. But you know what? You're doing a disservice to yourself and to your child if you don't say those words. I understand I might have made you feel embarrassed. I am sorry. I am sorry. I called you on that behaviour because we had talked about it before. And I did say that, you know, if it happened when we were out that I would call you on it. And I didn't care who was around. I am sorry. I understand that you might have felt embarrassed. It wasn't my intention to embarrass you. My intention was to correct the behaviour because we've talked about that. I am sorry. That's heartfelt. There's no but. You haven't made an excuse. You've explained your behaviour. I do appreciate that you were embarrassed. I didn't really intend for that to happen. I really, that, that wasn't the reason that I did what I did. But I do acknowledge that, that it did happen. What can we do to make it better? Do you want, do you want to talk about it? Do you want to talk about how you felt about it? Can we come up with a plan maybe as to how we do this in future? You don't go off and give them a tenor or bring them to Smith's or take them to the movies or to salve your conscience. 
It's a really, really poor and unhealthy message to send your child to do stuff like that out of guilt or as an, as a, a way of apologising. That's not actually truly, you know, a, a, a connection, a connective apology. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. I hope that you can understand that. Um, it's always a good thing to ask for forgiveness. I know in our house we have a constant conversation, and I'm sorry, Alethea, but Jess, this is the one bit that I am going to say. When I apologise to Alethea, um, she'll say, it's grand, or it's fine. No, it's actually not fine. I, I can't accept that as a response to an apology. A good, healthy response to an apology is, I accept your apology, or I actually don't accept your apology. I, I, I hear you and I'm, you know, thank you for apologising and thank you for explaining why it occurred. I, I understand that and, uh, and thank you for listening to me when I explained how it impacted me and it upset me and it hurt me. But right now I can't accept your apology because I'm too angry or I'm too upset or I, I need to think about it more. And you know what, as the person who is apologising, you have to accept that. Because if you put your hand out and it's slapped, that's on you. That's part of growing up. If that person does not want to accept your apology right then and there, they're totally entitled to. And you needn't bother getting the hump. You needn't bother getting the hump. Oh, for God's sake, I apologise. What else do I need to do? You need to accept their decision. That's what you need to do. So that's about going into that conversation defensive. You're looking for what you want out of it. So you're not actually hearing what they're saying. You just want what you want out of it, which is you want to hear the nice things for you. You don't want to hear anything that's not nice for you to listen to. You don't want to hear them correcting you on anything. You don't want, you're going to correct them if they start pulling out stuff that you, you say, you always say always. It's not always. I don't always do that. You know, you haven't actually heard what they've said you're always doing. They may have used an exaggeration by using the word always, but actually the, you know, your your boots in front of the hall door at the bottom of the stairs where people break their neck. Yeah, you, you're always doing it. Maybe, okay, seven out of ten times you're doing it. It doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is they've asked you not to do that and you're doing it. So just suck it up, buttercup. That's the way that works. That's a phrase we use in this house a lot. Suck it up, buttercup. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope that those, those um, observations with regard to the art of apologising um, uh, make sense to you and they they kind of have a resonance and you can understand how to use them I suppose that's the most important thing um, this session is is it wasn't an easy one to prep for because you know one of the elements of it is is that I have to say as part of the learning you know apologies aren't easy if they are maybe they're not sincere for the person apologizing and sometimes for the person listening to the apology, it's not easy either, because maybe you don't want to hear anything from the person apologising. Maybe they've so upset you that you don't even want to hear them or see them or look at them. And you know, if the apology has to wait until the person who's been hurt is ready to hear it, well, you have to do that. You have to acknowledge and appreciate that. You have to accept that as fact. That You have to accept that that's where they're at. They're not ready to hear you yet, maybe. It's not on your timeline now. It's on theirs. Um, and so you have to just acknowledge that. <clears throat> you move along, but at the back of your mind, remember that that connection that you have with that person needs to be repaired. And it can only be repaired when they're ready to sit and talk with you. You can't force it. You can't push it. Just because your ego wants you to make it all better, right now might not be the right time for the other person. And that's something you have to accept as well. Um, Harriet Lerner has a lovely expression. And she says, if we could only listen with the same passion that we feel about the need to be heard, life would be so much easier. So if we would only listen with the same passion that we have for the that we feel for the need to be heard our communications would be so much better so much healthier so much stronger and so fulfilling 
so um i won't say quick quick but because it's already oh it's almost a few minutes to, to 11 but i did have the recap of the other sessions at the beginning so it's about a, a 40 minute session um i might actually just put that in the time that the actual class starts at whatever 10 10 08 or 10 09 um because we had the recap first. I hope that today's session on the art of the of saying sorry was of use to you. I hope that all the lessons from lockdown have been of use to you. I'm enjoying providing them. I'm enjoying sharing um, the knowledge as I learn um, and as I spend more time myself um, reflecting and um, philosophizing over um, how we as humans are in our lives and how we interact and communicate. Um, I hope that you're enjoying uh, listening to them as much as I'm enjoying delivering them. Um, for now, this is session number 12, The Art of Saying Sorry. It's called Apology, number 12 from the Lessons from Lockdown series. I'm Sinead Kavanagh. I'm the Holistic Parent in Navan and County Meath. And I look forward to seeing you again here next Tuesday at 10 o'clock um, when the subject matter will be on boundaries. Uh, we're going to look at boundaries because we haven't done that one yet. So for now, it's Tuesday. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the week. I hope that you're all well and healthy and your loved ones are safe and happy. Uh, for now, please feel free to interact with the page. Interact, uh, send me a DM or a PM privately if there's anything you want to ask. And if you're watching on the replay, hashtag replay in the comments, please. And please make sure to share your interactions so I can come back and chat with you. So for today, it's Tuesday the 28th of July, uh, it's just 11 o'clock, Lessons from Lockdown, series number 12, episode number 12. I'm Sinead Cavanagh, The Holistic Parent. Take care and bye-bye.